going on? I'm here with UFC Bantamweight Miles Johns. He is fighting Daniel Argueta next week at UFC Vegas 79. Uh, big news of the UFC world today is the merger with the WWE went through. Uh, I don't know if you've seen anything on that, but do you, is that going to affect you guys as fighters at all? You know, I don't think it's going to affect us too much. I mean, I think it may give us an opportunity to kind of um, transfer over into that world after our career. So it's just another endeavor that people are able to um, get involved in if they like. But I, I bet that would be about the about the extent of it. You know, I think um, I, I know some people are worried about if it's going to take away any legitimacy from the UFC. But listen, in the UFC, we fight. And that's uh, there's a bunch of fighters in there, a bunch of dogs and that we're going to be fighting forever. As long as we're in there, we're going to be fighting. So I'm not, I'm not worried about any of that. So it, it's, it's exciting if you're into WWE and all that. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. I mean, you talk about the potential for you guys post UFC career. Is that something you've even considered? Like, you know what, maybe when I'm done, I could go over there and just power bomb some dudes. It is, you know, it, it would be fun. I'll probably have to talk a little more uh, mess and uh, make myself known a little bit and get a, um, show my personality a little bit more because I have that when I'm around my kids and stuff, but I'm just not as comfortable saying all the things. Right. So I think something a lot of people might not know about you is your brother, Elijah, is a super talented prospect. He actually, he was just on the cusp of making the UFC, unfortunately dropped his last fight in the LFA. He's in the main event uh, this July. So when you see your brother so close to, you know, taking that next step and then not being able to get it done, what's your advice to him after that? Uh, stay the course, you know, j just stay the course. This game is hard. You know, there's the highest highs and lowest lows, like everybody says. And and um, it just takes time, man. You know, if, if you stay the course and you you stay diligent with your process and stuff, it'll it'll come, you know. And uh, one of one of the teammates there, Abdul um, El Sawadi, actually, um, he was he was one of our guys, one of our brothers. And he's he's still training there at Fortis. And he's a perfect example of that. You know, this guy was uh, been so good for so long, been UFC ready for so long. We've all known it, but he had a couple hard fights over um, in I think in Abu Dhabi is where or Palestine is where he's fighting um, for that um, one. Not, it wasn't one FC, but it, it was a big promotion. Brave, brave, brave FC that he's fighting there for, and just ran into a couple dogs and slipped on a banana pill, which can happen in the fight game. And um, at times we were wondering, like, man, this could this could be the end. It's only the end if you make it the end. You know that that's it. He just stayed the course. He kept he kept uh, training super hard and stuff. And now he just had a huge moment on Dana White's Contender Series a couple of weeks ago and is in the UFC. So I know if EJ stays the course um, and he stays diligent with this process, that he'll be in the big show before too long. Yeah, I mean, coming out of last summer, he had the Bond Team brothers both burst on the scene off of uh, the LFA. So I know a lot of fans, myself included, were excited for the Johns brothers to to make uh, yeah. a run, but I guess you might have to wait uh, just a little bit longer for that. But for you personally, this fight against uh, Argueta is going to be your third straight fight in the apex. Uh, do you like fighting there? Or do you kind of wish they would throw you into one more route of your pay per views? You know, I don't mind fighting in there. I'm, I'm used to it now, but I do, I do enjoy a crowd, you know, and I, after I get this win in my post fight interview, I'll probably ask Sean nicely to uh, send me somewhere where there's going to be a crowd next time. But, but I don't mind it. It's a it's a special experience, you know. It, it brings in that like that martial arts feel, you know, just um, with the with the limited amount of people and stuff in it. So, and th there is a little bit of a crowd in there nowadays. You know, they they do sell some tickets and stuff for it now. The very high dollar tickets, but um, but yeah, I don't mind it. But next time, yeah, send me somewhere there's gonna be a crowd. Yeah, I, I think uh, you know, for an exciting guy like yourself, I think all the fans would would get a lot of benefit of seeing you fight in person, but it has been about 10 months off for you. You had one canceled in June. So how good is it going to feel to get back in there? Man, it's going to feel so good. You know, I've, I've been going through a lot of trials and tribulations outside um, of the octagon during this process, you know, and um, I've, I've talked about it a lot, kind of, you know, from moving from uh, Dallas and training at Fortis to coming to Kansas city. And then James being pulled from a corner uh, the night before my last fight, which was a two weeks notice fight. And, then getting this fight lined up with Rayoni on my first fight under Trey and having that pulled Wednesday night. Like, Pete, like the hard part about that is I put so much time and effort and money into that camp. I got four kids, man. My wife was 37 weeks pregnant. Um, when, when I went there for that fight, I didn't even get my show money. Like, and that that's freaking, 
it's difficult, man. You know, like these people are relying on me. Like, uh, I, it's, it's a lot of pressure on my shoulders to go out there and uh, get the job done to get both checks. But at least like we were at least expecting show money. We never expect anything like that to happen. So having to go, having to go through that, it's just been like, uh, it's, it's been tough. I'm, I'm just excited and ready to get back in there and, um, show the world what I, what I'm made of and how much I've been going through because I know all these trials and tribulations just made me more mentally strong than I've ever been in my life. Yeah. So with the kind of added pressure that's come with what you've had to go through the last 10 months, does that affect, do you think that's affected your training and do you think it's going to affect the fight at all? Or do you think once you're in there, none of that stuff even matters? I feel like the pressure is now gone. I feel like, I feel like I've been knocked down and on my back already. And th so the, the pressure's gone. Like now, now it's just my opportunity to go out there and fight like a dog. Like I've, I've just been through these trials and tribulations and just been getting hammered and hammered and hammered and taking it on the chin. It's like mentally I'm stronger than I've ever been. And I'm ready to go out there and show it. There's, there's no more pressure now. Now it's time to show like what I've been through and what it's made me, how, how it's calloused my mind. And, um, and yeah, that, that's what, that's what I'm going out to the show that I'm, I'm a freaking dog and I'm a grown man. And, uh, and yeah, and everybody's going to see September. Now you, you said in, in the beginning of this, when you were talking about WWE, that you know, the whole talking is not really your thing. But I don't know. You, you got to be pretty fired up right there. So you might have a <laughs> WWE teacher than you think. But you, you called this fight on Instagram, Yoel Romero versus Tim Kennedy 2. Uh, what exactly did you mean by that? Yeah, it's just it's just funny. I saw when they posted it on like UFC News Alert or Marcel Dolph or somebody posted it and people are coming in uh, the wish edition to Yoel uh, Romero, Tim, Tim Kennedy. So it, it's funny. You know, I, I see those comments and you just got to laugh about it. Um, I, I, I definitely see the resemblance, you know, with Dan and my and myself. People have been calling me Mini Yoel for a long time, which I don't like anybody calling me Mini anything. You know, I, I don't I don't appreciate that, even though my nickname Trapo means shorty. Um, but, uh, but it, it's all good. I just take it and just laugh at it. So. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I guess if you don't like being called mini, I understand that, but I can't, I would be lying if I didn't see the comparisons, you know, I, I see, I see the comparisons. just even, li even little yo, man. No, I'm, yeah. Even little, just, just don't call me mini. I'm not, I'm not a mini person, but, but no, it's funny. I'm just, I'm just messing around. I don't really even care if people call me mini. It's, it's all funny games. For sure. So in your division, I'm not sure if you've been following the drama kind of at the top of it with all the, the Snapchat screens the guys have been throwing yeah. out. Uh, Aljamain wanted the rematch, then Sugar said no, then Cheeto wanted the fight, and Rob said he should get it. As a band weight yourself, what's your take on all that? For me, I see it as it's a wide open division. You know, the, the challenge is getting into that top five. Once you're in that top five, you're within arm's reach of the belt. You know, Sugar's good. I, I, I do think he's good. I don't, because of his personality, I don't think people give him the credit for being the true martial artist he is. I think mentally he is actually locked in, and I do think he has like a Bruce Lee type of uh, mentality to the game. But at the same time, with him holding the belt, I feel like a lot of people know that if they have the right night and they catch the right shot or, uh, or just whatever, that, that, and that, that's exciting. The hardest thing I think is getting through that like 15 through 10, that freaking shark tank there with uh, Yanez and Martinez and Umar and uh, and all, all those guys. Like if you can in Gutierrez, just all those guys, if you can make it through there and you can break out and get into the top five, then you're within arm's reach of a title shot and uh, and any, anything can happen, you know. But um, yeah, it, it just makes it exciting. You know, it makes it fun. I, I do think uh, I do think as far as sales go, I think Cheeto and Sugar is probably going to happen. but it does for me. It feels like a little unfortunate for Marab that he's not going to get that shot. If um, if if Aljo's not going to get it to skip over Marab and go straight down to Cheeto, it seems a little, a little bit unfair. But but it is what it is. That's that's just how the game works, you know. And if Marab says, of course, he'll get a shot soon enough. Yeah, I I tend to agree with you there. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Last question I got to ask: You are fighting Daniel Argueta, UFC Vegas seventy nine. How's it going to go down? What's your prediction? I think that Dan's going to get in my face. He's going to push the pace. I'm going to push the pace right back. And then um, end of the second or begin of the third, I'm going to catch a shot and I'm going to put his lights out. Awesome. Well, Miles, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you. Have a good one. You too.